and welcome to All Around Annapolis. I'm your host, Rhonda Wardlaw. You know, childhood obesity has more than tripled in just the past 30 years. And in 2008, nearly a third of all of our children were either overweight or obese. Those are some alarming statistics. Well, a local organization is doing their best to change these facts for our future and our children. And joining me now is Molly Corns, as well as Tom Bunchman with Jump Bunch that actually are doing all of the hard work. Thanks so much yes. for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you, Rhonda. You. you know, we're going to talk a lot about Jump Bunch because this is a really neat organization, but I really want to talk a little bit about the statistics because when I was uh, doing a little bit of studying before this interview, I have to say I was shocked. I know that the First Lady is doing her best to bring childhood obesity to the front line and make us aware of it, but the, the statistics are frightening when you have 11-year-olds with diabetes. Yes. Let's talk, either one, whoever wants to start this dialogue, is this our fault as adults because we didn't learn to eat right, or where does the problem start? Well, certainly I think adults have something to do with it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's parents, um, mm -hmm. certainly that's some of it. But I think in society today with the fast food and the, the fried foods, mm -hmm. I mean, I saw a statistic that they said 20 years ago a, a standard-sized bagel was like this size. Now a standard-sized bagel is this big. Yes. So the portions have just uh, gone up dramatically, and you mentioned the first ladies trying to do something about mm -hmm. that, to try to bring down the food portions, make people aware of all that. So, yeah. is it the parents' fault? I, you know, I guess everybody shares a little bit of a blame, but certainly society in general. Yeah. As far as jump on, um, you know, we tackle the the obesity on. You mentioned childhood um, uh, diabetes. Um, we have a sports and fitness program that works more on the on the fitness side to try mm -hmm. to bring. Um, work on children's body uh, balance, their eye-hand coordination, all those things, mm -hmm. to get them active like that so that uh, we can at least work on that side of it right. while talking as well about the uh, nutrition side. Well, let's talk a little bit about the activity because I believe there's more than like 70 venues that you offer through Jump Bunch. Is that correct, Molly? Yeah, over 70 lesson plans that we bring to the different centers every week to keep the kids interested and excited about the activity. They're always excited to see what we bring in our bag, and um, they just are so excited every week when Jump Bunch comes, and it's like their favorite day of the week for school. Well, I have to say it's critical that children get excited about it mm -hmm. because when we were kids, no, I'm probably not speaking for everybody, <laughs> but when I was a kid, um, we got on our bike somewhere around 8 o'clock in the morning, we went to the city pool, we hung out all day with our friends, played outside, came back for lunch, got back on your bicycle, and then left for the rest of the day and made sure you were in by the dark. Mm -hmm. Video games changed all of that. Yep. Tell me what you have to do in Jump Bunch to make it exciting that kids don't want to play a video game but play your games. I don't know. I mean, they just, they really love it. I mean, we have an intro with music and they just get so excited to dance and jump around and it's really bringing a silly side of it as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just all the different, because it's something different every week, a different ball, a different hula hoop, a different bucket, a different challenge that they get to actually just be crazy and run around and get all their energy and we're saying, you know, get your sillies out, get them out. Nice. And so they're just excited to, you know, be able to run and be able to jump and throw the balls and inside you can throw the balls at Jump Bunch. Oh, you know? nice. Right. <laughs> Not in the house. Yeah. That's right. Well done. Talk to me, Tom, sure. about the fact that, you know, as Molly was talking about the excitement and the enthusiasm, what if you're not good at hand-eye coordination. Some kids give it up. So how does how does your group change that? Well, that's very interesting because I always sort of took it on as a personal mission of mine to work with some of those children. Mm -hmm. You have some that, that are basically sort of clumsy. Mm -hmm. Some children are very shy. Some mm -hmm. children are even painfully shy. And so you just work with them and you nothing is ever demanded of the children. Nothing's ever, you know, no discipline or anything like that. We let mm -hmm. children work at their own pace. And I can say back when I was doing Jump Bunch personally, uh, right now I'm running the, the franchise side of it, but back when I was doing it personally, we used to work with some of those kids and I would take great satisfaction that we could pull some of these kids out of their shell and, uh, and get them to embrace sports and embrace activity and physical activity. So if there's a parent watching that says, oh my gosh, he's talking about my child, this might be something to help them gain a little bit more confidence. Oh yeah, and some parents you know, will actually email you and say, you know, how did Johnny do in class today? It's like, oh, we actually jumped with both feet today. You know, and uh -huh. they love that, you know, you can send out that little, you know, email to a parent that you know kind of is wanting to know how their child's doing and how they're developing. We actually send out progress reports yes. at the end that the parents love to see, 
and they can actually say, oh, I saw, you know, my son Johnny was doing jumping jacks, and he learned that in Jump Bunch, not, you know, I didn't teach him that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're having the, our Jump Bunch annual convention uh, right now at the Lowe's Hotel here in town, mm -hmm. and we started off with the, uh, our, our operations uh, guy put up on the screen just testimonial after testimonial after testimonial that parents sent to us. Oh. It's very gratifying, and I take, mm -hmm. I take huge satisfaction every night when it's finally time to go to bed that I've worked with children and mm -hmm. we've helped children. And let's, let's go ahead and explain yeah. this to, uh, to our listeners. Um, Tom, you actually were the creator of this. Yes. Let's go back and when did that start and, and why did you decide to franchise? That goes back to the late 90s, uh, specifically 1997. Of course, there's history before that, but I saw opportunity to approach schools, private schools, uh, preschools, daycares, rec centers, anywhere there's children basically. Mm -hmm and offer this sports program because every parent or almost every parent loves sports to some extent. Some mm -hmm. people are crazy about it and they're on their phones all day long. Other people not so crazy about it, but everybody has some level of it. Right. My own child now is in her 20s. However, when she was a preschooler, we would take her to, um, to dance and we would take her to uh, yeah. lacrosse, all those things, and parents yeah. like to do that. Sure. So we started at an early age, on the preschool age, even the toddler age, to kind of maybe get an early start on that, that mm -hmm. uh, and, and parents would really embrace the fact that we were doing that. Nice. Parents enthusiastically signed their children up into Jump Bunch. And at what point did you say, I need to stop being the instructor and being kind of the, the dad yeah. of everybody? Well, <laughs> 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 that started in 2002. Our first franchise right here in Maryland, in Southern Maryland, was in 2002. She's coming up on her 10-year anniversary nice. in October. Congratulations. And uh, since then, uh, at that time, I was still ran the local business and franchising. And at some point around 2006, sold off all the, um, the local business and worked only on franchising. Mm -hmm. And now we're at 45 franchises in the U.S. We're also international into India. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, and at the conference I mentioned here a moment ago at the Lowe's Hotel, we have people from California, Arizona, Texas, you know, so on and so sure. forth. And Molly, you actually run the franchise now for Annapolis. I sure do. And what does that encompass? How, how much of a distance? Um, my territory is all of Anne Arundel County and Kent Island. Okay. So again, you're talking about helping children as young as toddlers? Mm -hmm. Up to what age? Uh, we go up to 12. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I was hoping kids of all ages. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are the you can join <laughs> I go, thank you. Um, what What are the prerequisites for somebody who would be interested in in becoming an instructor or a franchise owner? Um, well, Other than love of children, yeah, obviously <laughs> they have well, yeah. to like you know children working with kids, but they, most importantly, they have to be fingerprinted. You know, do a, um, a background nice. check to make sure there's no. You know, nothing going on there. Sure, yeah. sure. Very important, yes. mm -hmm. especially with the news that's, you know, big right now yes. with a lot uh, with our children. What about um, advice to parents? You know, obviously get them involved, you know, in some kind of group like this. But just on a, on a smaller level, what can a parent do on a daily basis to help that child, you know, learn to like exercise? i got to be honest, I <laughs> run. Yeah. I'm not a good runner. I'm the one with the shirt that says, you know, if you can read this, I'm not last. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm slow. I know. Get over it. I've got them all. But I enjoy it. Sure. So how do you get kids to enjoy it, even if they're not great at it? Well, the, the question is how to get parents to be involved. I mean, kids, of course, you mentioned the electronic games and the mm -hmm. video games and so on. But, you know, parents are as guilty, if not the kids, right. the iPhones, the iPads, everything else mm -hmm. going on, not to mention how many hundreds of channels on, t on cable yeah, television. And just the mere fact you're exhausted at the end of the yeah. day. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess my suggestion would be the parents to, to be proactive with their kids okay. and go work with them. You know, go throw a ball, go out, jog with them. You know, mm -hmm. there's all kinds of children's jogging and running uh, uh, activities as well. Okay. And just, you know, work with your kids and be involved with the kids yeah. and, uh, and to teach them things that you know as a parent and uh, help them out with those motor skills. Do you see kids coming into the, to the program more advanced? because of this, because of the parental guidance? I mean, it really, really varies. Mm -hmm. It completely varies from, you know, the little ones that are just kind of starting to walk, you know, to the two-year-old that's really coordinated. So it really just varies. Even in your class, you can have a total difference. Um, so we have progression and regression steps to do with different age group and classes with the same program that's in our curriculum. 
Now, speaking of curriculum, at what point do you start teaching nutrition? Because that's obviously key. Nutrition is, we sort of weave nutrition into our, our, our activity plans and our lesson plans. Okay. Um, we don't have any activity plans or lessons plans that deals purely with nutrition. Okay. But it certainly comes up in the discussion because that's half the battle, like mm -hmm. we talked about. Mm -hmm. The other half, of course, is the physical skills. But you got to have both. you got to mm -hmm. have the nutrition side, and you have to have that. So, again, uh, the question is for the parents, what can parents do? Obviously, start with setting an example for their own children and how they eat and how they uh, nice. uh, deal with their own nutrition needs. Have you seen an increase in interest with some of the shows like The Biggest Loser and all of these um, weight programs that are, are showing results that in my mind are probably a little unrealistic? Yeah. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say, it's, I, I'm not sure we can me actually measure yeah, that. Yeah, I just know that like the, the parents just really do enjoy and just thank you for offering this type of activity to the centers of the schools, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. that we bring it to them and they have that option of, mm -hmm. of signing up and doing it. I think parents. if you look at those shows, that certainly that's it demonstrate that there is all this awareness out yeah. there. Mm -hmm. People realize Absolutely. the issues out there. Yeah, and yeah. honestly, I'll be on, I, I, I watch them because you do try to pick up on some of the tips that they're giving, be mm -hmm. it those little breaks where they give a nutrition fact or yeah. a, a fast fact on if you do X amount of minutes a day, you're burning X amount of calories. Mm -hmm. What are some of those that you could pass on to us? I mean, so, you know, walking is obviously easiest on the joints and sure. the whatnot, mm -hmm. but maybe somebody just listening saying, I need a place to start to be that example to my child. Where could they start? I would say, you know, you mentioned walking, there's swimming. Um, mm. Certainly there's the gyms. You can, mm -hmm. you can go to the gyms. There's a lot of gyms that are opening all the time. Uh, again, to set that example, swimming, mm -hmm. you mentioned the walking on the joints and all, but swimming is even, even easier. On, yeah. It's a non-impact type thing. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would suggest. And something you can do together. Mm -hmm. yeah. so bike ride. And, as, yeah. a, as a family. No, Jump Bunch actually goes into the schools then. Mm -hmm. So you're not like a program that's located over here and, yeah. okay, tell me how the schools, how that works. So we actually go into the schools and that's our, one of the selling points is we come to you and we leave and take everything with us. You don't even know that we were there. Hmm. You know, so we come, do all the activities, the kids have fun, and then we leave and just go about your day. So the centers really don't have to prepare for us, don't have to get ready, don't have to think about it. We come in, we do all the work, and we leave. And you're in Anne Arundel County Schools right now? Mm -hmm. Outstanding. And Kent Island, you said, was your, mm -hmm. your area oh. as well. Um, what if somebody was interested in learning more? Who would they call or contact? Contact Molly, I would say. Yep, well, they just go to uh, jumpbunch.com. Okay. And then right on there, there's a locations, and you can click on, you know, any state, but um, you can go right to Maryland and click on the Anne Arundel County and Kent Island, and that'll take you right to my webpage and show you the schools and the centers that we're in. Yep. And I have to say, recently, um, you're, you're, you're very big about giving back to the community that supports you. Tell me about what just recently happened when you brought in some of the students from HACA. Well, we work with uh, children from the HACA, um, 50 children. And uh, I mentioned, I referenced a moment ago that we're having our annual conference mm -hmm. here in the town. And we had the idea that, you know what, on the final day of the conference, why don't we just go in and work with these children? We got we have f basically 40 experts mm -hmm. from all around the country nice. that can work with these children. And it was part of just, again, you mentioned give back to the community. That's exactly mm -hmm. what it is, it's just a give back to the community, something fun for the children, something mm -hmm. fun for Jump Bunch owners as well. Yeah. Just, just a really terrific uh, event. It'll, it'll be interesting to see if some of these youngsters, uh, perhaps for the first time, are, are you know, enjoying exercise yeah. mm -hmm. as a, as a playtime instead of something they have to do. Right. Yeah. And directed exercise, too, so Excellent. structured type things. Too. Are you seeing, though, with the cutbacks in government and schools and all of this kind of thing, that we are losing those programs in the area schools? I don't know if it's still in Annapolis and Anne Arundel County or not. Um, well, I mean, I know that they still do have gym classes, but okay. some of the gym teachers have to travel to multiple schools, so they are cutting uh. back. So you never know, in a couple of years, you know, they might need a program like Jump Bunch to supplement and to come in and be that PE program. Some of the private schools are currently doing that. Mm -hmm. So it's more important than ever as the parent to take the lead. 
Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Excellent. I know across the country that historically, uh, when there's budget cuts, it seems like the first thing to go yeah. is PE. So. Mm -hmm. PE and arts, unfortunately, yeah. we see yeah. a lot of that happening. Yeah. Well, thank you both so much. Tom, one more time, an address, some place that people could go online and learn more about Jump Bunch. Uh, very simply, it's jumpbunch.com, and from there you can navigate to everything we do. Outstanding. Thank you both again for being thank with you, us, Rhonda. and thanks for all the valuable information. Thank You're you welcome. for having us. And thank you for watching. We hope that you'll join us again next time right here on All Around Annapolis with more interesting guests and interesting topics. Have a great week.